Hi everyone. So as you can see in my screen, I have received the congratulations mail that is the selection mail from Baiju's HR team that I have been selected as an academic specialist at Baiju's. So I received this mail yesterday and my interview was on 5th of January. So within a week I got my result. So before the before the send the mail, so the HR will just call you over phone and he or she will verify your details like your name. Currently, you are doing any academic course or you have completed your graduation or not. Okay. And then, like, if you have any job experience, like if you are currently working or if you have not working, then you have all the experience certificate, like, and also your graduation certificate is compulsory. Like, so they will verify all the details and they will share the congratulation mail sent to you over the email just after the call. Okay. So, there you have to do the registration link in this link and you have to just wait for the offer letter. So, offer letter will generally like, four or five days before the date of joining. So as you can see, my date of joining is 28th January. So I can expect by 20 to 24, I can receive my offer letter. After that onboarding team will get in touch to verify all my documents. So after at this point, you don't have to send any document, just complete the registration and wait for the offer letter. This is just a confirmation that you have been selected. So you know that the whole process of this academic specialist, like at first you have to apply and then you will receive one email that yes you have your profile has been shortlisted and you have to submit a demo video of five to seven minutes so just try to make the demo video good like you can use a whiteboard like real-time teaching if you have or else you don't have you can just make use of ppt and teach via zoom or anything just to make sure you are visible in that video while you are recording for the demo video okay and that demo should be strictly in english and like you should speak nicely, like you should be able to just teach the concepts like a teacher that is someone is understanding. Okay, not just explain the facts like a, it shouldn't be like a dictation. Just do it in a nice manner and you will be selected. Demo video is, is not a big deal if you do it in a nice way. So after your demo video will get selected, they will send you an in final interview run that is on the Zoom, Zoom interview process. So basically on the day of the Zoom interview, that first the interviewer will ask about yourself like it will be an introduction round so you have to tell about yourself the introduction and after that you have to give a live demo right so the live demo will be on one of the topics like there are eight nine chapters of so basically basic chapters of class eight to ten like the number system trigonometry mensuration geometry this algebra okay so you have to choose anyone it will all be mentioned in the mail in which you will receive your inter interview link you have to just prepare on any one of the topics but make sure that you are confident on the topic because the topic on which you will give the live demo on the interview the maximum questions will be asked from that topic only during the question answer round okay so basically i just thought of giving live demo on coordinate geometry and i don't have any whiteboard so on the day of interview during the live demo it is not compulsory to give live demo on whiteboard only you can also give it verbally even though it's math it's difficult but you can do it no issues your manner of speaking, the way you are communicating is the most important thing right there. Okay. Even if you are not explaining in very deep, it will say not a big deal. But just make sure that you are doing it in a proper way. That is like a way the teacher teaches. It's not that you are just giving dictations by seeing something or reading something. No. Then it will not create a good impression. Make go it slow. Tell your hand gestures, everything. And give you some examples. Okay. Share some tips and tricks like that. Make it a whole process of teaching. So after the live demo, which may last up to seven to 10 minutes, the question answer round will start. So the question answer round will start with questions on the chapter you have given the demo. Okay. So as I didn't have any whiteboard or anything, I thought of explaining the topic on coordinate geometry on using pen and paper, but due to light issues on the webcam, it is not properly visible. So if you don't have a marker or sketch pen, your white pen and paper will not do the job. So I choose of explaining trigonometry instead, and I did it verbally. So the question answers were basically from my trigonometry started. So let me share all the questions. Like I have been given as interview for the maths. So basically I was asked questions for maths only. So just let me share the questions, okay, which I was asked in the day of interview. So all those who are appearing for mass academic specialist it will help you a lot so the first question so on an average they ask 15 questions right but i was just 11 questions because i answered all the questions correctly if you answer all the questions correctly they will ask maximum of 10 to 11 questions only yes it's not compulsory that you have to answer every question even if 
you do some questions wrong, like two, three questions wrong, it's not a big deal. They will ask you more questions. So just you have to make sure that around 70%, 75% of the questions you are answering correctly and explaining them. It's not just the answer. Your explanation should be nice. Even you get something, get some question wrong, but your explanation of that question is correct up to 50 to 70%, that will also get the job done. Okay. So be confident. And the questions are very basic. It's not very difficult questions. Yes, one, two questions are very high, but rest other are doable. Okay. So the first question that was asked was what is the value of tan 65 by cot 25? Okay. So you know that in trigonometry there are complementary ratios. Like so tan and cot are the complement to each other. By complement, you know that the sum of the angles equals to 90 degree. Okay. So tan 65 is basically nothing but cot of 90 minus 25. So basically we write we can write also cot 25 as tan 65 because cot 25 equals to tan of 90 minus 65, right? So basically this question we can rewrite as tan 65 by tan 65 and the answer will be one so the question answer of this question is one first question the next question was cos a plus cos square equals to one then what is the value of sine square a plus sine to the power four a okay so what the what is given is cos a plus cos square a equals to one so we can from this equation we can write cos a equals to 1 minus cos square a so we know that 1 minus cos square a equals to sine square a right so basically from here we can get cos value of cos a equals to sine square a so now we can square both the sides so if cos a equals to sine square a then cos square a equals to sine to the power 4 a so just in place of sine to the power 4 a rewrite cos square so this will be sine square a plus cos square a so the answer will be one because it is a trigonometric identity right so this is exactly the way i answered this question yes you can use pen and paper in this round but I, I did it orally i didn't need any pen and paper for these two questions okay so just the way i'm saying i just explain in the same way to the interviewer because you have to explain it not only answer okay the third question was what is the HCF and LCM of two consecutive natural numbers? Okay. So if just take any two consecutive natural numbers like two and three, three and four. So LCM is a least common multiple, right? So for any two consecutive natural numbers, the only common factor they have is the one. So there are no other common factors between these two numbers except one. So from that only you can know that HCF will always be one for any two consecutive natural numbers. But for LCM, it will be the product of the numbers, right? So LCM of two and three is six. 3 and 4 is 12. So for LCM, it will be the product of the numbers and ACA will always be 1. So that was my answer. Next, probability of 53 Sundays in a leaf year. Okay. So just revise the chapter because if you don't revise these things, it will be very difficult to under, at, answer this type of questions, right? So in a year, we know that there are 52 weeks in general, but that is why most of them make the mistakes. It's not only 52 weeks, it's 52 weeks, one day in a non leap year, 365. Because if you divide 365 by seven, because there are seven days in a week, it will come 364, right? So we are getting 52 Sundays for sure. And the, then there is only one day remaining, right? So probability basically is like the probability. What is the probability that that one day will can be a Sunday? So basically there can be a possibility of total seven days like that one day can be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. It can be any of the seven days. So my total possible outcomes is seven. Okay. And what we have to get Sunday. So basically the probability will be nothing one by seven. So the answer of this question will be one by seven. Okay. Main, and also keep in note that it is a non-leap year. Okay. If it is not a non-leap year like in a leap year there is 60 days so the, it will be 52 weeks and two days so in that case the probability will be two by seven just keep in mind okay now next question was just a definition like what is the difference between 2d and 3d so this question can be answered in two ways but just try to answer in terms of mensuration like you can say in terms of coordinate also but coordinate like 3d coordinate is not in the syllabus up to class 10 so it's better to not answer in that aspect I answered in that aspect only, but soon I, as I answered, I remembered. So the key point here will be in 2D, the main thing is that 2D figures have area and 3D figures or shapes have volume. So that is the main difference. In 2D, we have area and 3D, we have volume. Okay, rest you know that in 2D, there are only two dimensions, length and breadth, and in 3D, there are three dimensions, length, breadth, height. Okay. And in terms of coordinate, it is 2D like in a plane, X axis, Y axis, and 3D is 3D, like X, Y, Z, three axis. So you can answer in a compact way. 
next question was a conceptual one like the largest triangle angle in triangle is 70 degree so what can be the minimum value of the smallest possible angle so we know that in a triangle the sum of the all the three angles is equals to 180 degree and the largest angle is 70 degree okay so we have to find what can be the minimum value of the smallest angle so for this question as we have to find the minimum value so we have to make the second angle also maximum so the largest angle is 70 degrees so we can also take the second angle also as 70 degree so 70 70 the two angles sum up to 140 degree so that minimum possible value will be 180 minus 140 that is 40 degree so the answer of this question will be 40 degree okay seventh question was like there are two cubits of dimension 3 into 3 into 6 so this means that length is 3 centimeter breadth is 3 centimeter and height is 6 centimeter are placed side by side okay so what will be the new dimensions so you have to just imagine this question in your mind so there are two cubits and you are placing side by side just you can see you can you are placing two boxes side by side in that case the height will not remain unchanged okay so the height will not change because you are placing it side by side so depending upon on which side you are placing if you are placing it by length then the length will become increased like three plus three will become six or if you are placing it by breadth then the breadth will increase so you can say that basically either one of the length of the breadth will change so it the new dimensions will be six into three into six or three into six into six height will not change this is the main concept either length will change or breadth will change depending on which side you are placing it. okay and in general you can say that length will increase like the dimension will be six into three into six okay so the eighth question was easy one that the perimeter of a regular hexagon is x so what is the value of each side just in this question the concept is you have to know hexagon what is hexagon hexagon has six sides and regular hexagon means all the six sides are equal in length okay so if the perimeter is x then each side is x by six okay simple you have to answer x by six so the ninth question was the area of a trapezium okay so you have to know the formula of the area of a trapezium what is the formula half into length of the like sum of the length of the parallel sides into distance between them that is half into the a1 plus a2 that is the length of the parallel sides and into the distance between them is the height okay just you have to remember this formula and you have to just they can simply ask the formula or they can give a put the values and you have to find the area just putting in the formula so i mean the key here is the formula okay so the tenth question is heights and distances it was a problem statement i have just simplified the question and drawn the figure for you the question was like in a circus a joker was climbing on a rope which was tied to a pole so basically this is our pole the perpendicular and this is the rope okay so it was said the length of the rope was 20 and 20 meter and the angle from the horizontal of the rope was 30 degree so what is the height of the pole so basically nothing you have to find the perpendicular and the hypotenuse might 20 degree and this angle is 30 degree so basically sine 30 will be height by hypotenuse okay so sine 30 is half equals to h by 20 so h will be 10 10 meter okay so the height of the pole will be 10 meter and the last and the final question was this based on again on trigonometry okay the question was sine square a plus cos square a equals to 4 you have to find the value of tan a. so i am not going to share the process but i can say you the answer will be 1 by root 3 just give it a try yourself okay so the there will be some difficult question it is a bit not too difficult but a little bit difficult so you have to do it yourself because on the day of the interview there may be some new questions so just get it i have said you answer the answer will be 1 by root 3 okay so these were the 11 questions and after that no more questions were asked to me because i guess at that time i answered all the questions correctly and after the interview i crossed it yes i answered all the questions correctly only and after the questions are around so there will again be another round basically that is some general questions like if you are selected what the ship timings will be from 3 pm to 10 pm okay there will be one day off on weekday or may not be sometimes it may not be on weekday so basically six what six days a week working and one day is your holiday okay and the timings will be 3 pm to 10 pm for full time okay and during the training so as you join initially three four weeks will be training for so that time it will be from 10 a.m in the morning to 7 p.m in the evening with one hour break in the middle okay so that is the training time so are you all comfortable with this timing that they will ask and after that 
currently it will be work from home but once the office re is reopening and are you will you be able to relocate to bangalore because there office in bangalore only okay are you there is any issue or not they will ask you for you to relocate to bangalore and also if you are selected as badges you have to work there for a 12 months okay you can only be for 12 months so they say but as far as i know it's there is nothing legal contract or legal bond it's just a bond and if you there is no you don't have to pay any money if you are living before 12 months okay so there will not be any issue just a normal bond okay so don't think that you cannot live before 12 months or you have to pay a fine if you live before 12 months no it's not like that but there is a contract of 12 months okay as you join so that's it that's the whole process hopefully these questions will help you for all those who are preparing for the mass academic specialist interview okay